In this world, certain children are turned into living dolls to serve the Shadow's family. These dolls aren't mere servants though, they also double as the faces of their faceless masters. Emiliko is the cheery and clumsy doll of the reserved Shadow Mistress Kate. Her main duties involve catering Kate's every whim, cleaning the mansion of Soot, and being the perfect living doll. Alas, Emiliko has quite a long way to go before she's anywhere near perfect. Fortunately for her, Kate is a kind and fair mistress in spite of her initially standoffish demeanor. As the two slowly grow their unlikely bond, Emiliko grows more and more curious of the world around her. There's so many questions swirling in her mind. But what use does she have for those? After all, she's just a doll, right? Emiliko wakes up excited for a new day. After all, it's her first day of class. While walking down the hallway, Emiliko sees a serious-looking Mia. Given what happened yesterday, with Sarah and Mia both berating her and Kate, Emiliko hesitates to approach her friend. But to her surprise, Mia is back to her friendly self, confusing Emiliko. Mia clarifies that she was just showing her mistress Sarah's emotions, so there's no hard feelings between them. The two friends then promise to keep yesterday's ordeal their little secret. After a while, Rose and Lou arrive. Since Emiliko's a newbie, today's agenda involves a house tour. Rose first takes them to the hall of cleaning equipment. It's where living dolls gather to get and put away the cleaning tools they use. Emiliko notices the heavy equipment on the wall. Rose explains how these equipment are only for rare emergencies. Heading out, Emiliko asks about a dark and closed hallway. Rose details how it leads to the kitchen and laundry, areas only veiled dolls can enter. Another matter a living doll shouldn't fret over. Next stop, their classroom. Emiliko notices a floor plan of the Shadow's house on the wall. The living doll's rooms are below the Shadow family's living quarters. She then sees a poster of all the living doll's uniforms. In particular, Rose explains the portrait, a formal attire a doll will wear when they're serving as a face. They'll have to wear that once they pass the debut. Passing through the grand hall, Emiliko stops in front of a barred hallway leading to the debut hall. Curious about the precedence of the event, Emiliko asks what it entails. Passing the debut is a sign of adulthood within the Shadow's family. The Shadow Master and their living doll must prove worthy of the family name. They should show how much of an asset they will be. Rose and Mia both successfully pass their debuts, but they can only give out a few details about it. However, they do give Emiliko and Lou words of encouragement. Emiliko then asks if there are older living dolls. There are. They just live in another wing of the house, where all the lords live. Mia reminds Emiliko of a living doll's core mission, to not fret over trivial matters and to stay loyal to the Shadow's family. When Lord Grandfather's name passes through Emiliko's lips, Rose immediately covers Emiliko's mouth. Only the Shadow's family can actually use that moniker. Emiliko's ineptness might get her in trouble one of these days. Let's hope not though. Coincidentally, a bell rings, which has Emiliko worrying. Is she in trouble? But Mia informs her it's the emergency bell. This means a phantom has been spotted. Rose and Mia look grim as they all head to the hall of cleaning implements. There, all the dolls hurriedly dress in their soot suit and gather their tools. Textbook-wise, Rose, Mia, and Lou have heard of phantoms, but this will be their first time encountering one. A phantom is a cluster of scorches. These scorches are made from soot gathered together and begin to move with ill intent. As the girls arrive, they're faced with a scary-looking monster. This, kids, is why our mothers tell us to clean our rooms. A bell rings again. This time, it's the star bearer giving off her instructions. Barbie, who is menacing and mean, calls all the other dolls' names. A group of dolls comes in with the hammers Barbie has ordered them to get. With Barbie's command, they smash the phantom to bits. Now, the phantom has split into tiny scorches. All the scorches seem to be running away, even passing Rose's team. Barbie gets furious as the girls stay frozen. Having heard enough of Barbie's ruthlessness, Mia instantly grabs Emiliko to go after the scorches. With Rose and Lou behind, Emiliko starts recalling all the lessons she's learned so far. Mia thwarts Emiliko's untimely lesson recap, she can do it later. The phantom reforms and hides behind a painting. Mia then devises a plan. Emiliko pokes it from one side while Mia smacks it as it comes out. It seems like a foolproof plan, except another small phantom has hidden on the table behind Emiliko. As it reaches for Emiliko's head, Rose jumps to shield Emiliko. This causes the phantom to unify with Rose's whole head and inside her mouth. Lou tries smacking the soot off but to no avail, because hitting the soot means hitting Rose. She collapses. This allows the remaining phantom to quickly merge with the soot on Rose's head. The phantom grows into a spider-like shape and crawls up the wall. With the phantom carrying Rose, she'll die if the girls don't do something quickly. Mia tries to support Rose with her shoulder, but Mia is met with Rose's kicks. Recalling what she read, Lou realizes water can make scorches slow and brittle. Grabbing the cleaning spray, Lou sprays water on the phantom's legs. It works but can only reach a certain area. 
With Rose's incessant kicking, Mia's afraid her face will get kicked and scarred. As Mia decides to let go, Lou asks Emilico to choose who to save, Mia or Rosemary. Emilico isn't one to give up on her friends though. She quickly grabs a flower vase, throwing its contents on the phantom. The phantom breaks. Although the girls have an even bigger mess to clean, Lou praises Emilico's quick thinking. Rose, on the other hand, wakes up and starts walking. Her eyes pitch black. She then bangs herself to the wall with an open mouth. It's Soot's sickness. Living dolls suffer when Soot enters their bodies. Fortunately, the first aid team arrives, immediately taking Rose for treatment. That's Emilico's first essential lesson. A doll must always be diligent in cleaning so that Soot won't collect and start moving. The next day, Emilico wakes up and greets Raleigh. She gets shocked when Raleigh jumps from the table. Strange. After that, Emilico meets up with Mia and Lou. Emilico worries about Rose, but Mia reassures her that the girl will be alright. Today's a fun day for the dolls. They're going to wash squeaky clean in the washroom. Because the bath can only accommodate two dolls at a time, Mia and Emilico go together. After vacuuming all the soot away, they jump into the bubble bath. Ah, refreshing. Emilico wonders if the bath is also the same type used for cleaning. Mia clarifies that it's a special soap made only for dolls. Relieved, Emilico says she thought the water would get inside her and she'd break. Living dolls are finely crafted, Mia quips. Changing the subject, Mia politely points out how Emilico doesn't know many words. She realizes that every doll has a different starting point since Mia could read when she was born. After the bath, Mia leads Emilico toward the showers. Since it's Emilico's first time, she screams when the showers blast water on her face. Mia didn't tell her. In retribution, Emilico wiggles so that the water splashes toward Mia. As Mia turns away from her attack, Emilico can't help but stare at the scars on the girl's back. Outside the bath, Mia and Emilico reunite with Lou and Rose. The girls then separate from each other as they have to serve their own mistresses now. Emilico recounts yesterday's and today's events to her mistress. Kate has never heard of a phantom. Hmm, strange. Before Kate can forget, she reminds Emilico of how the doll should return her things back to its place after cleaning. It seems that Kate's soot doll isn't in its rightful place. All excited, Emilico tells Kate how Raleigh moved on its own too. Soot starts emitting from Kate's head as she warns Emilico not to make excuses for her failings. Trying to defend herself, Emilico explains how stuffed toys should be able to move since living dolls can. More soot emits from Kate's head as she slams the table hard. This, however, causes Raleigh to jump from Emilico's pocket. Kate is shocked to see Raleigh up in the air while Emilico is happily surprised to see her mistress' unique ability. It is the power of our Lord Grandfather that breathes life into living dolls. A pensive Kate utters as she thinks about why she can control Raleigh. Emilico insists on having Kate control Raleigh again. And indeed, Raleigh moves. Is it only applicable to stuffed toys? Why stuffed toys? The doll recalls how she stuffed their toys with Kate's soot, weirding her mistress. Why did Emilico use her soot in that manner? Deep inside, she's quite touched by her doll's lively and caring nature. That night, Emilico writes her learnings and questions in her notebook. As she scolds herself for wondering about the lords in the other wing, Emilico's bell rings. She quickly dresses and heads to Kate's room. Her mistress has been practicing controlling her soot. She can now manipulate soot into a cup without dirtying herself or her surroundings. Emilico praises Kate for this, even if she can only do it for a short time. Since her books don't say anything about shadows having powers, Kate makes Emilico promise to keep it a secret. As the debut looms near, Kate and Emilico must study together for it. The following day, Barbie gathers all the living dolls in the Grand Hall. It's about the Phantom Mayhem. The mean doll starts questioning every living doll as she believes sloppy cleaning is behind the Phantom. When Rose's team steps forward, Barbie calls Rose dim-witted. It was Rose's team that let the Scorches slip by too. Rose calmly explains how they were only meant to be holding classes yesterday. Interrupting Barbie's scolding, Mia bravely details how they have a newbie in training, aka Emilico. Yesterday's delayed response was only due to their inexperience in dealing with such a problem. As Mia promises to submit a report, Barbie approaches and, without warning, kicks Mia in the stomach. Emilico calls out Barbie's rude behavior, which makes her turn her ire toward Emilico. The star bearer gives the newbie a new nickname, Emilico, the sunshine. Although it doesn't sound that mean, there's clearly a double meaning to it. Sean, who's been overhearing the whole conversation while cleaning, purposely gets in between Barbie and Emilico. This causes Barbie to lose her balance, but Ricky, Sean's teammate, rushes to break Barbie's fall. When an angry Barbie lashes out at Sean, the boy just sarcastically explains it's his poor eyesight. After all, he can't wear glasses when his master doesn't wear a pair. Trying to kowtow to Barbie, Ricky punches Sean's gut and calls him the black sheep of their team. Nearby, the shy Rum has managed to catch everyone's attention with her clumsiness. Rum's team looks at her disdainfully as she picks up the soot she's dropped and scattered. Barbie immediately confronts Rum about her frailty. Tears start falling down Rum's cheeks as Barbie pulls her hair while accusing her of creating the phantom. When Emilico tries to defend Rum, Rose immediately covers her mouth. Don't piss Barbie the star bearer off too much now, newbie. Emilico turns to two of Rum's teammates, the Bell Twins. 
However, the twins don't really like Rum. She's been nothing but trouble for their team. Might as well make Rum their scapegoat, right? Despite Rose and Mia's warnings, Emilico still defends Rum from Barbie. An explanation for the phantom mayhem? Very well then. Barbie assigns Emilico, Rum, and Sean to take over the Night Watch. They'll be reported to the adults if they can't find out why the phantom formed. Before the dolls disperse, Barbie commends Ricky as the only promising one out of all the new dolls. What a bootlicker! Later on, Emilico arrives at Kate's room. Kate immediately asks Emilico if she's available to study later. However, Emilico tells her mistress she has tasks outside Kate's room. Technically, it's true, but Emilico hides the details from Kate. Her mistress might scold her. Dismayed, Kate is left sighing. Soot starts to emanate from her head as soon as Emilico leaves. Night 1 of Night Watch Judy commences. Seeing as it's only their first night, the trio, especially Emilico, are still energetic. They then investigate every nook and cranny of every room. However, Sean doesn't really think newbies like them could solve anything. Ever optimistic, Emilico tells them they have plenty of time before the major house cleaning. It's still a week away. Making sure they stay together, Emilico holds both Rums and Sean's hands as they walk through the hallways. Night 1 ends with no progress. The next day, Emilico wakes up to clean and serve Kate. When the night falls, night 2 begins. Still, nothing. The next two nights go the same, unfortunately. As each day passes, Emilico's don't fret notebook entries get sadder and sadder. On their fifth night, they're all sleep deprived. Emilico hopes to finally get to the bottom of the phantom mayhem tonight. Arriving late, Sean brings some sleeping blankets with him. This time, Sean decides to just sleep until the time's up. Barbie just wants to cause problems between them and their masters. They haven't even been efficiently cleaning as well. How can we fulfill our roles as our masters' faces if we look all worn out? Sean sleepily points out, not one to give up, Emilico shares a map Mia drew for her. It might help. Sean doesn't care one bit though. He gets up to inform the girls that he brought two more blankets for them. Emilico gives in after seeing Rome's tired state. But it's hard for Emilico to fall asleep. It's her first time sleeping out of her room and with people next to her. Both Sean and Emilico get up upon hearing Rum sobbing. It's the first time they hear Rum talk since they were grouped together. The timid doll apologizes for causing them trouble and tells them to forget about night duty. To Rum and Sean's surprise, Emilico lets out a cheer. Rum's finally talking. Emilico reassures Rum, even calling them both her friends. The happy moment ends as the trio sees someone approaching. Can it be a phantom? As the figure draws closer, a scared Rum runs and leaves Emilico and Sean. However, it's revealed to be a veiled doll. Emilico tries to talk to the veiled doll but gets no response. Sean stops Emilico since veiled dolls don't really speak. Realizing that Rum ran away, Emilico exclaims how they must find Rum. In tears, Rum is hidden somewhere cramped and full of soot. To comfort herself, Rum starts talking to her finger, which she named Rummy. She's reassuring herself that Emilico will come to save her. Though she shouldn't expect much since dolls are made to be expendable. Emilico shouldn't care about another doll, especially a failure like her. Meanwhile, Sean and Emilico start walking down the hallway to look for Rum. Calling Emilico a strange one, Sean repeats a doll's mantra, fret not over trivial matters. Yet here's Emilico doing the opposite. Emilico rebuts by recalling how Sean defended her against Barbie. Sean's stomach growls as they talk. Emilico takes out the bread roll from her pocket, earning a bright smile from Sean. It's the first time Emilico's seen Sean smile. The two continue to search for Rum. This time, they use the map and try the hallways leading to the front door. Once there, Sean opens the door, but both are hesitant to take a step. That path feels ominous. Mia even put on the map. You mustn't go there. It's strictly forbidden to venture outside the house, let alone enter this hallway. But Emilico vows to find Rum before dawn. She must go. Walking down the hallway, Emilico steps on a trap. Sharp arrows fly from both sides as Sean quickly grabs Emilico's back. Does this mean that all who try to leave Shadow's house are immediately eliminated? On the verge of overthinking, Sean repeats the doll's mantra. Is it really worth not fretting over such matters? Heading back, Sean and Emilico look for Rum elsewhere. There's no way the timid Rum would have passed those traps. As they close the door, they hear Rum scream nearby. Both Sean and Emilico instantly run toward the walls. There's no door leading to the walls. How did Rum make it inside? Emilico soon realizes that the wall's door is the same as their rooms. So she jumps towards the wall. Revealing a revolving door, Sean quickly follows Emilico. Finally, they find Rum. Emilico immediately hugs Rum. Apparently, Rum's scream was due to Scorches trying to attack her. Now that Emilico and Sean are here, they both try to squish the Scorches. However, a phantom appears, climbing up the wall and ready to attack. Aha! They found where that phantom came from. Emilico borrow Sean's blanket to entrap the phantom. But it's too strong, causing Emilico to be dragged around. Chasing them around, Sean finally gains momentum and gives the phantom a nice kick. His kick causes the phantom to hit the wall hard. All that's left of the phantom is black soot. 
But the trio's work isn't quite done yet. Emiliko and her sharp eyes spot the trap door on the ceiling's been loose. She bravely climbs up the ladder to open the trap door. Here, she realizes how soot from each room passes through the attic. That's where the soot's been leaking from. Happy as the case is now solved with no one to blame, Emiliko brings out her bread roll again to celebrate. As the three enjoy the delicious bread, a friendship like no other is formed in a house shrouded in shadows. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.